What's up guys, Hit Paul's back for the next part of this tutorial. Now in this part, uh, this part is actually going to be very short. You should already see the play length of the video. But this is actually the single most important step in the entire process. Uh, I want to beat this guy, uh, beat this idea into your guys' head because of how critical this is and how badly this can screw you over if you fail to do this step. And that step is we need to test that it's going to work inside of UE4 before we go any further. We've already done some, we've rigged it, we've skin weighted it, and we've even got a little test animation, which to be honest with you is actually probably good enough to even use. I mean, I, I don't really see anything totally wrong with it. I kind of don't like the mouth movement, but I'm going to leave it at this point here. So I had already, when I went here to, um, do the materials and stuff like that after I painted him. I've already brought him in, but he is actually a static mesh right now. Okay, so he's, he's, you can see here we're in the static mesh editor, we're not in the skeletal mesh editor. So we're gonna bring in a new version of him for the um, SK mesh, and what we need to do is we need to export this guy out. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the hub, control page down to get all the bones, and include the mesh. Okay, we don't include this helper thing here because this isn't part of it. We don't include any of the IK helpers or anything like that. This is what we want. We want the bones and the mesh, and we're gonna export selected. So, let's go here and we'll come here and we'll say parasite SK mesh. Okay, FBX. Let's check our settings. I am in 2016, which is putting me on uh, FBX version uh, 2014/15. And let's just go through the settings really quick. Uh, what I have checked off here. I'm not using Turbo Smooth. I do want my smoothing groups. Um, I'm converting any deforming dummies to bones. Every single one of the bones that I'm using is a deforming dummy. Uh, we're preserving edge orientation. I do want to bring in the animation. Okay, and we're going to bake it from 0 to 80 here, and we're going to uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and resample all, then that, that will give us a keyframe on every single frame. Uh, it, 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 just, it just eliminates any weirdness from, say, like a link constraint or a rotation constraint or, or anything else that weird that you use. It bakes the actual uh, translation and rotation of the bones into the animation file. So pretty much that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep a Y up here um, and keep automatic units. We were on centimeters and we're going to hit OK. So let's go here go to recent places and we will bring in our parasite SK mesh okay and when we bring it in we are presented with some options okay we definitely want it to be import as skeletal we do want the mesh we don't have a skeleton for him yet so we keep this blank because obviously they wouldn't actually we could pick one of these but it's gonna totally break because this does not line up to that skeleton at all we are gonna keep TOA's reference pose uh, I don't remember exactly what that stands for um, T0A I think maybe it is uh, whatever whatever the um, it basically whatever pose he's in is frame 0 becomes the uh, like the skin pose uh, we will preserve the smoothing groups uh, we do not want to import meshes in the bone hierarchy because if we do check that we will get all of the bones all of the we'll get the cat rig showing up as a mesh and we don't want that uh, we'll go ahead and compute normals but we could import the normals but it doesn't really matter it'll end up being the same we don't want a physics asset yet okay well, we can do that later and we actually don't want the animation okay uh, we could bring it in but I don't want to do that yet because I, I like to pr I prefer to have it so that um, I uh, import the animations as separate files we also want to make sure that we have checked override full name because if we don't do that the the file name will actually be uh, parasite SK mesh underscore parasite SK mesh because it will pull the, ma the name of the, of the mesh into the scene. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to override the full name and that'll take the name of the... Um, this option only works when the scene contains one mesh. So we're just going to... I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure we want to keep it like this. And convert scene, I'm not exactly sure. Converts from FBX to UE4's coordinate system. So we'll keep it like that and we'll just hit import. And we should just get two files, I believe. We should get, yeah, we get the SK mesh and we get the skeleton. So if we take a look, notice one thing. Because we did the TO, the TOA thing, he's actually in that squatted down stance, and that's fine. Uh, there's, there's nothing really wrong with that. And if we take a look over here at the skeleton, and we take, and we just start clicking through these things. In fact, I think if we go through the thorax, we should see the whole skeleton, and it does look good. Okay, so so far so good. Let's uh, just for funsies let's throw the material on there 
So he looks a little better. It's going to have to compile because it was never compiled for skeletal meshes. So we do have to wait a little bit for that. But let's go ahead while it's doing that and export the animation. So when we want to export the animation, we want the whole skeleton, but we don't want the mesh this time. Okay. And what we'll do is... I'm kind of thinking whether or not I wanted to make a new folder for the anims. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so we'll say parasite anims fbx. Okay. And what we're going to do, let's move this uh, thing out of the way. We're going to call it anim parasite sneak. Okay. And we'll hit save. And we hit OK. And then one of the beautiful things is that we can just come back here and we can ignore the sneak, which raises him back up. And we still have the animation here. Okay, and we can do this once again, control page down off of the main root, and we'll do parasite run. And we'll hit save. So we have two animations really, really fast just by turning off that layer. And I'll just turn it back on, um, off, take it off ignore here. I'll save the scene just in case. And then we'll come back here, and you can see that the material finally finished. Okay, there it is. Looks all right, I suppose. And then we come back to the asset browser. So we're going to give him a new folder, call it anims. Okay, we're going to bring this in, and what we want to do is take both of these guys and just wait until we get the plus sign. Okay, notice um, when I first bring it on, it's not there, and then you got to wait. Okay, so once you have the plus sign, you can let go of the mouse, and it is going to take a second. I don't think it actually worked, so we'll try it again. Give it a wait, give it a wiggle, give it a wait and then let go. There we go. Okay, so it already detected that we don't have a mesh, so we're going to come here and we'll just type P-R-A, P-A-R-A, -A, and we'll pick the parasite skeleton. And so what we want to do is we want to keep the exported time, okay, which would be the 80 frame time frame. If we wanted to, we could actually do a range here. So say you did an animation that was like 500 frames and the first 100 is idle, the second 100 is run, the, second, the next 100 is jump. You could set the ranges here if you really wanted to. But we're going to go exported time, okay, and again override full name for uh, convert the scene any custom attributes and we'll just hit import all and now if we take a look hopefully he's running okay and he looks just dandy and then we'll check the sneak and he squatted down very cool just for fun let's see about um, I'm gonna delete this in the end but just so we have something to play with here we'll call this SK mesh dump because I do want to delete it. And what we'll do is we will take um, run at the beginning and sneak at the end. We do want to make sure that we're playing. Um, oh, I did an X and all. I did, I did a, I, I'm, an, I'm an idiot is what I did. Let's get rid of that really quick. Delete. It's going to come up with the force delete, and we'll say yes. I want to blend space 1D. What was my mistake? Hopefully no crashes. In fact, since it's a possibility that we do crash, let's save those. And those. Okay, you just right-click and hit save. Okay, so we can click on one of these guys to open up Persona. And let's create the uh, blend space 1D. 1D, like so, and we'll go anims, and I'll just leave it the name of 1D, and we do want, this, is, this might be new, I don't think I've done this in 4.8 yet, uh, let's see what happens if we go run to sneak, see how he raises up, and then lowers down, let's take a look here. Let's actually give ourselves a little bit more room so we can see it. And we'll keep it about there. I'm trying to get my camera right on floor level here, like so. And now we'll scrub back and forth. So he's sneaking, and he's running. So we can actually have him go up and down, blending. And it looks like everything's working, so we're good to go. Um, and, and like I said, I, I really hope that you guys take the time to do this this step. Um, even though we haven't really done our animations yet, 
Um, we kind of have, you know, we've got something in here. There's nothing really wrong with them. But we have to make sure that it, it works because what's gonna, what would happen is if we went through and we created, you know, five, six, seven, eight, however many animations you did, and then we brought them into UE4 and then realized that he's like super huge or super tiny or his some of his bones are making his geometry tweak out and and you know there, there's glitches that can happen it's much more solid these days I mean this is 2015 and we are on UE4 we are using newer software for authoring you know I'm in Max 2016 so we have less of that worry uh, it was much more of a, of a hassle way back in the day when when you were kind of hacking everything together no matter what you were doing in this case you know we're safe and and, and I did expect to be safe but I still have the habit of testing 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 and I really only do it for skeletal meshes and the reason is is because by now I'm so comfortable with static meshes I've done over like 2500 static meshes brought them into engines uh, I, I'm really not worried I know for a fact that the workflow works I, I have actually done about probably a hundred maybe 120 or so actual characters into different engines but I've only used the cat rig like three times uh, this is actually the third character I've ever used cat rig on the first one was um, from a the, the little gingerbread man and the demon guy from our uh, from my game jam entry with the what's in the box one where it was in the snow you know running the little gingerbread man around I use cat rig on that uh, because I you know cat rig is brilliant because you um, like I said with the procedural walk cycle you can get things out really, really fast, especially if you only need the character to run, or you know, be run, running, or stopping, or even jumping is actually pretty easy to do in here. Now we are going to go through and do all of the animations, but there we go. Uh, we're clean. We're safe. We we can move forward. We can now start pumping out animations. But I still, even though I, I'm still uh, now, I'm like 99% confident that nothing's going to break. Uh, every time I create a new animation, I'm probably going to go ahead and just immediately bring it into UE4 and test just to make sure that what I'm doing is in fact not going to break still okay I want to make sure that we're still good alright so this guy's working now and and I feel safe um, I can go ahead and actually let's close that down go ahead and delete that now we don't need it uh, we can use it but we don't we don't really want it um, we're not going to blend between sneak and um, and uh, what's it called uh, the the run version uh, using a blend space though we could we're actually going to do it with a state machine instead so that when he goes into sneak mode all of his animations will kind of lower him down so whether or not um, and the cool thing is is that we're doing the animation layers we can basically do all, a lot of the blending um, theories inside of max like we can just do layers here because if you remember sneak is in here um, as as a full-blown layer and if I want to I could blend it right here too no problem if I hit play okay it's essentially the, the same thing that we saw in that was happening in UE4 when I was doing the blend space we're getting the same thing right here that's that's all we're doing so we can bounce them up and down and we can even animate this with a curve if we wanted to actually have him go up and down up and down but that's not gonna really uh, do us any good we don't we don't really care to do that so we'll just keep it at a hundred and whether or not we want to use it we'll throw on ignore so I'm gonna end this video quick I just like I said hopefully you guys uh, believe me when I tell you that it, this is a very important step even though we were safe there was a very 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 good chance that we were not so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one